Hey, what's up guys? How are you all doing? We have another Project Jeweler here. This will be number eight. It is the largest product largest product in a series. We're still doing this in C. And yeah, we'll get on with it. The four adjacent digits and the 1,000 digit number that have the greatest product are nine times nine times eight times nine equals 5,832. Four adjacent, such as this, or maybe this, or even this, yes. But anyway, find the 13 adjacent digits and the 1,000 digit number that have the greatest product. What is the value of this product? I've already done this, but you know, we gotta type it up. We'll see how we done it, right? And uh, I'll spawn my glorious notepad here for you. Which takes up a lot of the screen, but this is about what it's gonna be, size-wise, with my font choice and everything. Do the includes. No, I'm just kidding. Do the includes. We should only need the standard input-output header today, uh, because we want to see our answer. If we didn't need to see our answer, we wouldn't need any any headers, to be honest with you. But we want to see it. We're gonna use printf, so we need the input-output header. Once again, we're gonna go with our old buddy, old pal, void main. And even though you might think this is a bit of a doozy, maybe, for this problem, it's really not. Once you break it down, it's it's very simple. We are going to use a couple arrays, but that is the most advanced thing we're going to be covering in this one. I'm just putting a note here. We're going to take 13 adjacent digits, get their product into a variable, get next 13 so on and so forth to get max. The max product, that is. To get the max product. Okay. That's the gist of what we're gonna be doing. Now, for our variables, I'm going to be using a long, long, because as you can see, well, as I figured out before, this, the answer is 11 digits long. And now, for the C data types, you have, you know, you have short, you have int, you have long, you have long, long, you have unsigned versions of each. Well, originally I wanted a long variable, but long only goes up to 10 digits, and the answer being 11 needs long, long, which goes up to 18. Uh, but we needed it because it's, it's longer than 10, the answer's longer than 10 digits, pretty much. We're gonna have a product, we're gonna have a max product, yes? The product and the max product are gonna be long, longs, because they're, they're gonna be big numbers, eventually. We'll have a few ints. I'm gonna do I. This will be a counter for our loops. And then we're gonna have a couple boundaries. I'm gonna have a lower boundary, and I'm gonna have a higher boundary, which I'm calling low and high bound, respectively. And it'll basically... that's gonna be... Um, a 12-digit range inside the number. So like, 3, 6, 9, 12. We'll have this. We're gonna take in 12 digits. We're gonna get the product. We're going to increment by one, and we're going to take the next 12, get the product, increment by one, so on and so forth, until we get to the end. And then we're going to, we'll have a max product by then, hopefully, and it'll be, it'll be good and right. But that's what we're going to be using the higher and lower bounds for there. Moving along, we're going to have an integer array. That we're going to shove all these digits into. The dirty little number it is, right? And we're just gonna initialize it. Well, not initialize it. We're gonna make it the size of the 1,000 digit number. I don't think it needs to be 1,000, but maybe it does. We're gonna make it 1,000, because it helps me visualize it better. And we're also, to take it in, we're gonna have a character array. Because if you tried to take in this whole 1,000 digit just, just as is, as a number inside this, C doesn't like it. It's like, hey, that number's way too big, what the hell are you doing? So we're gonna put it into a character array first and then translate it into an int inside the integer array and work with the math from that one. But to do that, we need a character array and call it BFN. If you're familiar with Doom, you know probably what that stands for. If you don't, it stands for a big friggin' number, because <laughs> it is a, a big friggin' number. And I gotta do a little, a little cajoling to get this to fit in the notepad, so I will cut the video to where I get that in. Okay, and we're back. Just copy pasted the number and lined up the thing so it looks all pretty and square. If you try to do this like another language where you, you can see I have strings, I have them with with the double quotes on the beginning and end of every line. This is just to fit it into one block here on the 
on the screen so you see that you know I copy pasted it and it's it's the actual number you can put this all on one line and it'll be able to count it 1,000 digit you know a one-liner here that'll make your notepad go way off the screen or you can do it like this if you try to put like pluses at the end and concatenate it it doesn't like that it says it's you're adding integers together for some reason or binaries it's not really the best and it doesn't work but if you do it like this, it counts it, it says, hey, the string ends here, it goes to the next line, hey, the string continues here, and it goes along till the end, and it, it counts as a full, a full shebang there, a full character array, it's great. Because in C, strings are just arrays of characters. Alright, but we got these, we're gonna continue initializing our variables here. We could initialize product and max product to one. This is some uh, very upbeat music I did not expect. <laughs> and we're gonna set our... Our integer counter here, our i, and our lower bound, we're gonna initialize to zero. Our higher bound, our high bound, we will initialize to 13. So we're gonna be looping zero to 13. You could do, I guess one to 13 or zero to 12, however you wanna do it. We're gonna do zero to 13 for the purposes of this video. Get another one of our patented while loops. And we're gonna have while while bound, while high bound, while high bound is less than a thousand. We're gonna be iterating through all the numbers till we get to 1000, because it's a 1000 digit array. Now I don't need to hard code this. I could have made a variable and put it in there, but I'm just, I'm hard coding this so that it's easier to follow that, hey, it is a full 1000 digits. But. If this was a more serious thing, maybe you'd want to make that a variable so you could change it easy, more easily, yes? But inside this while loop, we're going to have a for loop. We're going to go i to 0, i is less than 13, and i++, plus plus, or plus plus i, we're going plus plus. And inside this for loop, we're going to take our integer array here. We're gonna take whatever value we shoved into i, which at this point is zero. So we're gonna start filling our integer array with the character array. And how do you do that? Well, in C, we take what's we're gonna take the thing that's in our character array. We're gonna add the lower bound to it. Now at this point, lower bound is also zero, so it'll just take the first amount, the first you know, the first digit. It'll take the seven here, for example. Oh, I like that. That's nice. And we're gonna subtract quote zero quote or apostrophe however you want to say it now this is the way in c not equals i want to do minus sorry now in c this is a way to trans translate a character into a number an integer in this case we want to make a character value into an integer value we subtract the character zero from it and the c compiler when you, whenever you run in it, the binary executable, it, it makes it a number, and it's cool. It puts the number into the integer array. Why? I don't know. It just does. Just accept it. I don't read up on these things like I should, okay? <laughs> but just know that that, that is a, a relatively easy way to make a character into an integer. In C. Or at least this version of C. ANSI C. Whatever the compiler I'm using is. 99 at least. But after we do that... We're gonna get the product, and we will take the product itself times the integer array value that we just put in there. And the star, the asterisk equal is like, you know, you have plus equal takes x equals x plus something. Well, the asterisk equals x equals x times something. So it's itself times, it's another one of those fancy dancy operators. And it looks nice, I like how it looks. Uh, for the purposes of debugging, even though it's not really going to show you much, it'll kind of be useless. So I'm going to put it anyway. I'm going to put a long, long digit. I forget if I need the U or not. Maybe it's just long, long. We'll find out. If it's wrong, the compiler will tell me I'm wrong. And you will in the comments, I'm sure. But we're going to print out the current product we're on. So it'll start at zero every time, maybe, but that's all right. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is thirteen total digits, which is what this for loop does. Puts the first thirteen in there. Then after we get our first thirteen digits, we're gonna have an if statement. We're gonna check if the current product is greater than the current maximum product. And you know the simple 
greater than check. If it is, we're gonna make that the current max product. Simple, right? Now after this, we're gonna, we, you could do this either at the end of the loop or the beginning of the loop. We're gonna do it right here. We're gonna reinitialize product to one. And that is because if we initialized it to zero, then this would equal zero more times than we need it to. We don't need it to equal zero except the very first time, or if there's a zero in here. Other than that, we're gonna initialize it to one for the purposes of this because we did not initialize it at all then it would just keep going up right here and we would not have an accurate we'd not have an accurate reading we need the number to reset between every 13 digits and between every 13 digits so that we get the proper product of the next 13 digits instead of adding to the previous product that's not what this question is asking for so that's why we're doing this if that didn't make sense i apologize but uh that's that's how i talk right and then we're going to increment our lower and higher bounds here that the lower bound will start at zero, and after that, we're gonna increase it by one. Thus, we have to increase our higher bound by one as well, so that you get the next full range of 13 digits. Increment it, all right. And then that's all there is. And then you go to the next one, you check the product, you shove, well, you shove the next 13 digits in. You check the product of them. If it's greater than, you make that the maximum. Then you increment, you shove the next 13 digits in, so on and so forth until you reach the end, at which point the higher bound will be 1,000. And we'll have, um, hopefully, the good maximum product there. I don't know why this is... Odd music time. I thought I chose elevator music, not very odd 70s, sad-sounding lifetime music, but that's okay. Reminds me of nostalgia. Um, if this is the right way to print long longs, we'll find soon enough. If it's not, oh well. But at the end, we're going to print our max product so that we see what answer we get, because because why not? Uh, I'm just trying to double check, make sure everything looks decent until the compiler tells me it doesn't. At the moment, I think it looks okay. Bring my PowerShell up. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know why you look like that. There we go. Gonna compile it. Hey, it compiled. Let's run it. And it did not give us anything. So I suppose I do need a U here, yes? There we go. We just needed the U to properly print the digit because I forgot what you needed to print. As always, if I don't make a mistake, then you're not really watching me, are you? Some imposter. Some mimic, but here you see. Uh, the debugging is not really useful, I just... When I was doing it before, I, I wanted to see what values we were getting to see where it was maybe messing up. And uh, you get a lot of zeros, of course. And then it builds up, and then you can see where it goes to the next set, builds up, goes to the next set of 12, builds up, so on and so forth. But at the end, we get the final answer of 235, 146, 240... Zero, zero, the 11 digits there. And that's your that's your answer, that's how you get it. That's all there is to another fairly short problem. If you thought it'd be longer, you were wrong, haha. <laughs> no, but it's, it's really not that bad. You're just using arrays and getting digits and incrementing into those arrays. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you on the next one. We'll be doing number nine, problem nine, which is special Pythagorean triplet which has a fancy name for something that maybe isn't so fancy. But I'll see you then. Thank you for watching.